<laughs> Welcome to ECGR 4161. This is lecture number, uh, I think I've lost track of time. Uh, this is 9 or 10. 10, I think. Well, you know what, I'll look online. So, uh, in fact, let me uh, go back to our old, uh, our old notes. So if you remember from our last class, uh, it was a combination of several, so this is lecture number oops, 10. Uh, so today, lecture number 10, if we uh, think about what we jumped over before, just a recap, we looked at several technologies that would be used for uh, identifying how if something is out there. Now notice this spread right here. Notice that you have one ultrasound which is identifying the position in this area and the other one is identifying something in this position and then it gives you a single number there. I want to uh, for a bit have you think about another type of input and how you're going to handle this and this is LiDAR or for that matter, any sort of technology associated with this, with LiDAR. And so if I say that my LiDAR is here, and I am going to, in a range of a certain a, a range of a, a certain angle, sweep and record data, I can, for example, say all right, in a 60 degree sweep, roughly 30 degrees that way and 30 degrees that way, you know, 30 degrees to the left and right, I will return a number for every one half degree. So at that point and at this point, which represents 0 0.5 degrees, at this point, which represents one degree at this point that represents 1.5 degree. Now if you think about every single one of those points that you are measuring in all of those degrees, how many measurements am I making? 30. No. 120. 120. 120. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it 120 or 119? 120. 119. Would be from zero? 120. Yeah, because you have zero. Did you not take this? 121. You don't have one for zero. Oh, I did have one for zero, I said. Right, so now you said it. <laughs> so how many points is that? 120. Sure? Yes. Yeah, 120 points. 121. Just kidding. What's the difference between 2 meters and 600 meters? Remember that argument last week? Say that again? The distance between 2 meters and 600 meters? Remember that distance last week? That argument? All right, well, if, we, uh, if we're measuring 1 degree, right? So we'll take a measurement at the first point, 0 degrees, then 0 0.5 degrees, and then 1 degree. <laughs> But that one counts towards the two, right? <laughs> one counts towards the two. <laughs> no, he's saying there's it's definitely one, two. One. Does two begin? At you have a beginning and end point, two. and then every single point in between. Share point. So the answer is going to be what? One twenty one. One hundred nineteen points. <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> is it one twenty? One, 21, one, 21. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's one. It's one twenty-one. It's like a fence. You get all See, like, let's up. let's count the binary and up to fifteen to binary. That's six. You got sixteen. Sixteen data points, right? Because it's 
zero close to the digit. Yeah, count the beginning and end is 21. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 21. Yeah, And you were joking before. Who said you were. It was just kidding. There you go. You were right, right? Test question. Test question. <laughs> Oh, that would be an excellent test question. You bet. So what you're going to get is a stream of points that will tell you how far away it detects something. Or if it doesn't detect anything. So the, uh, the data that we'll send back, let's see, has anybody here done LIDAR before? I'm trying to remember what the, uh, I can't remember what the uh, return value is if it doesn't detect anything. I'm trying to remember if it's zero or if it's like nine 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 nine. Let's just say it's zero. All right. So if you are sending something in, this lidar device, if this is a sick lidar, is communicating via RS two thirty two. It's a sick lidar. It is a very sick lidar. Oh yeah. I think it's the LMS two hundred. As an example. And the data would come back if, for example, there is a wall here, and this wall exists between 20 degrees and 40 degrees, would be what? Zero, 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 zero. Remember, I said it's going to represent zero if it doesn't detect anything. It'll keep on going, and until the 20 degree, which is what point? 21. The 41st position, it might come up with something like, and I believe this comes back in centimeters because it's German. So the measurement might be, let's say, uh, Five hundred. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is in this distance here, <coughs> what is, is this distance right here going to be the same as this distance right there? No. Unless it is a curved device it is going to identify or be somewhat increasing or decreasing as time goes on. So it will increase, right? This distance will be a little bit further away as it goes. No, it will go farther, closer, farther. It will be far away and then it will get closer and then it will go back farther. Ah, yeah. So this will be 499, maybe 499. It may be 498 until it reaches the middle, which might be 495. Then it'll go back out to 496. And eventually it'll be 499, 500, 0, 0, all the way to 0 for the last position. So, will you be able to tell? What is the actual length of that wall? No. Yes. Yeah. You had some software going. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If you had some software, congrats, you are now to write that software. <laughs> no thanks. So what I'd like you to do is to turn to your neighbor and identify how you can figure out what the distance is or what the length is of that wall. Keep in mind that if you have the book with you, it's in there in chapter four. <laughs> All right, All right, we're back. I saw two two solutions and I want to talk about them. Number one is if you take a look at what this is, it is pull it up. What's the matter? You don't want to see that? Oh, so the question is, what is the length of the wall? 
Alright? So, there are two aspects of this. One is, as, as you're looking at this, we cannot see. We know from the measurements that this is 20 degrees. Correct? Yeah. We know from the measurements that it goes from 500 to 500. Yeah. And of course, if this were a right angle, see if this is right, see if you agree. This is uh, sine of 10 degrees yeah. like is equal to x over 50 or 500. Yeah. Yeah. Like now you say over two or times two? Yeah, times two because times. you're only accounting for half of where you drew the right angle. Yes, sir. Yeah, that, yeah. So I'll just leave that as x, right? Yeah. So x is equal to, by the way, we'll say the wall is equal to two x is equal to later on. X is equal to, uh, what does this turn out to be? 86.8. 80 what? 86.8. 86. 86. 86. Which means the entire length is 173.6 roughly. All right? Now, this also uh, comes to mind as somebody else had another idea. And they said, if this is 500 and this is 495, right? And this is X. That's right there. X squared is equal to 500 Q, uh, squared plus uh, 495 squared. Whoops. No, that's wrong. Right. <laughs> yeah, x squared has to be with 499, 495 squared is equal to 500 squared. 500 squared is equal to x squared plus 495 squared. Roughly, x is equal to the square root of 500 squared minus 495 squared. Does anybody care to be able to do this for me? Everyone is going to my computer. 6 uh, eight. I think. Yeah. 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 So, you get it? so, it so turns out, is it truth 70.53? So what does that tell me? That if this were true, then... Um, we can going see what you do. In, Ooh, we know. <laughs> if this were true and I were truly dead on, then that would be the solution, correct? 495 is more like 490. So I maybe was off, keeping in mind that uh, um, okay. all of this has nothing to do with this length right here. So in other words, this, uh, this length is probably a little bit uh, just a little bit smaller than 495, right? It's probably 492 or 491 or something like that. Now let's think about this problem. What happens if my LiDAR device, again, 60 degrees. And the wall is like this. Very bad. Very bad. It's a lot of more lines of code right there. 
This tells we're about the you same can error. There you go. Especially against that corner, I think it's shot pretty good. Shot pretty good. <laughs> so why am I doing all these problems like this so that we don't have lots of uh, lots of long text for uh, for tests in the future, right? Yeah. So I'm going to measure this as uh, and you assume it's going to bounce back. It's light out. So it's not ultrasound. <laughs> So in this case, we will measure in this uh, this point right here is 10 degrees, and this point right here is 20. Yeah, I'll make it 30 degrees. To make life easy. And at this point, our measurement is 500. I'll make it nice and big, 5,000. Yeah. And at this point, our measurement is going to be 6,000. 6, what are these units again? Centimeters? Uh, we'll call it centimeters in this case. One reason is that the, uh, the range of a, a LIDAR sometimes is like uh, uh, 80 meters. Is a good distance. Yes, mm -hmm. The degree, what is that relative to? Relative to, this is zero degree. Okay. So, what is the uh, question? <laughs> the length of the wall. Alright, so again, turn to your neighbor and solve it this time. Have you hit the recording? Hey, Santa. De los Santos. Oh. Alright, has been uh, observed by many, and thank goodness for uh, uh, Google searches. Um, people have come up with uh, what they call the law of cosines. Oops, is that a cosine? I'm sorry, I was thinking about loans, all right? So, uh, does that look about right? C being our, uh, our side over here. Everybody, I mean, you came up with the same number, but how, how did you come up with it? We saw the two distances, and then that's the x, and then subtracted 5,000 in the y distance. We come up with the x and y value. Okay. So, in other words, what you did is you. Uh, did that? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Except I did the other side of the Yes. Okay. All right, so one thing I want to point out is you typically have to, oh, who was uh, Preston, I think you kept on saying, uh, or, or was it uh, Keith, you say, you run it through the computer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, keep in mind that, yes, you are the computer, you are actually writing the software that will take care of that. So, what do you think the steps or the algorithm associated with this method will be? First thing you gotta know is the angular 
angle, the change in angle with the angle, the beginning measurement side. Yeah. Find the angle of first non zero point. Yes. That's all I'm sure, but I'm sure we're doing the angles. And then uh, the next step. You're beginning Count. in points. Count the points until you see a zero at the end. You can't read that. Count the points on the one that are non zero. Well, if you know the angle, do you know how many points there will be? All right. Yeah. right? So if you know how many points you're measuring and you know the first and the last, obviously you're going to know how many points there will be. So now you know how much data there is. Now, this was one situation where. Everything was, as it was measuring, was always decreasing. And this was the situation where it was increasing, or it was decreasing and then increasing. So you can imagine that you might have two situations. One where you are looking pretty much dead on to at least part of the surface and another where it is going to be at some angle. So if you think about a situation like this, what if in your range of angle it is not centered across the middle, but it is right there? Yes, sir? It doesn't matter if you use that well, person, you should be able to do it no matter what, right? All right. But what will be the distance here? It'll be something like, you know, if it were 500 here, at this point right here, it would be for something, right? Mm -hmm. And then over here, uh, what's that distance going to be? 500 something. Something. 500 something. It's going to be lower. 400 something, right? No, it'd be like 508 or something. It's kind of decreasing as we were going down. It decreases to the center line. Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah. So it decreases, then it'll increase, and then it'll keep increasing. So 50x or whatever. Yes. So we have roughly two different situations where it decreases, then increases, or increases, then decreases. No, it. it Decreases and increases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. And in a situation, so there are three situations, right? So I guess at this point it is. We're assuming a flat object. Say this again? We're assuming a flat object. What? Well, we'll, we'll assume a flat object, object for now, all right? <laughs> yeah, because when you look at a tree, it's going to be a lot different. Examine the distance data. If it decreases, then increases, you can assume It is perpendicular, right? Yes. No, because if it's all the way past the center line, it's then it's still just perpendicular. Increase, yeah. And it can be perpendicular. Still means well, that's one of the situations, right? It's crossing. Well, that's a good point, too. Yeah, he's right. 
if it if he's like ten k, he has two subs for the a. processor. <laughs> Well, maybe one thing I'm, I, I should step back and say, no matter what you're doing, is there a difference no. of the algorithm you should run through, or should it always be the law of cosine, it's as been suggested? It'll always work to use the law of cosine. Yeah, it will be All right, well, so. a special case of law. So what you're saying is, at this point, just say law of cosines. Cosine? Cosine? an accounting All right. Are you, are you getting this idea that I've got I've got car loans on my mind? Sign a loan out. Pardon me. So, what I want you to do is to actually step back and look at this first problem and see if the law of cosines works with that as well. So let's take a pause. All right. So, I asked you to check it in. Yes. Apparently, this does work. Uh, since all of you have the calculators, I would have to pull it up on my PC. So, we'll say uh, solve. What is that? QED. End of proof. What is QED? End of proof. End of proof. End of proof. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is he? Uh, like uh, it's Latin for, for, for uh, um, uh, E pluribus sternum or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke, okay? It's funny, whenever I make a joke on screen or on uh, film, sometimes I get a comment that says, ah, uh, he doesn't know what this is. <laughs> Maybe people don't understand sarcasm. All right, any questions on this? Let us go ahead and take a 10-minute break. We'll come back. All right, the next thing to talk about uh, here in class is what's called a uh, optical encoder. Coder. One way that you can actually detect where you are in the world is to put on a wheel, or on the wheel, attach a disc, and on that disc is alternating dark and light stripes. And this goes all the way around. And what you do is you shine a light on this, and have it reflected back off the surface, that will give you a pulse for every time one of those black and white stripes goes by. So depending on how you set up the, uh, uh, the signal, black is either high or black is low, active high, active low. Doesn't, doesn't matter what it is because the consent or the, uh, the stripes as they go around are going to be the same distance. So this square wave, if it's the square wave is the same size at high as it is low, what kind of duty cycle is that? 50%. All right, that's called a 50% duty cycle. And that is when the uh, high and low part of the pulse is same size. Now why is this valuable of knowing? Well, let's imagine this. If you want to know or have what's called dead reckoning, you'll want to know exactly how far your wheel has turned. There are, of course, problems if the wheel is slipping, then you won't know truly accurately. But assume in a perfect world that you are not slipping. The wheel is not uh, slipping at all.
So assume in a circle you have All right, imagine these are all the same size, right? So, you have four dark regions. Your wheel diameter is 10 centimeters. By the way, this encoder could be much smaller than your actual wheel. Does it matter? No. It doesn't matter because keep in mind that the same location will be no matter what the size of the wheel is. What does matter, of course, is the diameter of the wheel, not the diameter of the encoder. So if you have if you see 20 rising edges of the pulse, how far have you traveled? <laughs> Law of so cosines will not do this. Shall I solve the problem first? It's like 30 centimeters times 5. All right, well, think about this. How many, and this is exactly, you've seen 20 pulses. And, oh, by the way, four pulses equals one wheel rotation. You've seen this before, haven't you? One wheel rotation is what? Pi times 10 centimeters. Pi 2R? Correct? Yeah. So that means that, of course, that goes out. So our total centimeters, somebody doing the math for me? 50 times pi or 50 pi, right? What is it? 157 centimeters. Now, the warning I should make is what if you don't know if you've traveled exactly that many pulses? So let's take a look at this problem again. So again, we have our encoder. I'm going to make life easy for me. So if I have my light right here, If I have no pulses, how many centimeters could I have traveled? Thank you. 
something that pulls more than one. Assuming that your wheel goes this way, assume the worst case where the light is here. Oh, it's 360 divided by 8. Yeah, it's 45 degrees converted. If they're equal. Well, that's one of the requirements in this problem. Worst case, they're all equal, right? They don't look equal. Assume they are. They are. So just take a few seconds and let's pause the tape and uh, turn to your neighbor. All right, so we're back. So the uh, the worst case, as I've mentioned, is you've traveled how much? All the way from this edge, which is white, to this point right here, which is still white, which is approximately how much of the uh, of the wheel has been traveled? One eighth. One eighth, one eighth of circumference. Which is one eighth times pi times d times d, which is equal to three point nine two nine two five three point five fourths pi, which is three point nine two five nine two five centimeters. So the, uh, the next question to ask is, what if the wheel is 50, um, 80 centimeter diameter? Oh, we're doing the worst case or are we doing half of that again? Worst case, right? So the worst case is one eighth times pi eighty, which is equal to uh, ten pi. Thirty-one point four. Three point one four one six centimeters. Almost power. So, what is the observation you're going to make about the uh, uh, the use of wheel encoders? Make small ones. Any more than they are, the more range of error they have. Say that again. The larger they are, the more range of error they have. The fewer transitions from black to white, or the fewer markings, is I think what you're saying, the better chance there is for error. Yeah. Yes. So. If you have the opportunity, so a lesson learned. Make the fold when you laugh. Make it completely black. You're joking, right? That's not okay. Nah, that's all right. That's because somebody uh, 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 said it would be good. Lots of... Uh... Lots of resolution. So, a similar type of project, or a, a similar type of problem that I want you to try, and this will be one of the last things we do today before our quiz. Uh -huh. Five, right? So, um, wheel and encoder, right? The radius is 10 centimeters. Your encoder has 20 pulses.
So you say your microcontroller has measured 307 pulses. for the wheel. And assume no slippage. What is the range of distances of travel? So as a hint, draw it out. You can pause. All right, so welcome back. This, is, uh, this was my quiz eight, so let me do the solution for this. One thing to take a look at is, for all intents and purposes, looking at a picture of this, if you have your circumference is, if you have a sensor here or the, uh, the black position where it's measuring here and here, and remember I said it's really, really narrow, so that way you could really ignore the width of it. And that's why I said that. So roughly between here and here is 1 20th of the circumference, right? So the worst case is that you start right here and it goes around and then you end right af after this. And I'm kind of ignoring this, uh, this distance right here of what it is, which was only 1%, I said. So that's why I said 1%. The, uh, um, so that's the, the worst case of, of one dimension. The other worst case is that you start at this point and you end at this point. And so in that case, you have the following. You have either a plus or a minus 1 20th of what you're going to measure. So the long oops, is going to be equal to the distance plus 1 20th of the circumference, or yeah, of the circumference. Or the short will actually be the distance minus 1 20th of the circumference. So what is your distance? Well, distance is going to be equal to 307 pulses, 20 pulses is equal to 1 circumference, And one circumference is equal to 20 pi centimeters. Remember, I said radius, whoops, 10c, whoops. So the distance is going to be 964 307 pi, which is equal to 964.47 centimeters. So the long is equal to 300, roughly 307 pi, plus pi, right? The short is going to be equal to 307 pi minus pi. 308 pi to 306 pi is your range. What is that pi constituting? It's in the equation here. Your circumference, each no. 
no, each no, no, no. distance between here and here oh. is pi. Oh, okay. I would think that it would be your best yeah, case, be. your best case to your worst case. I, long short, it depends. I mean, best case is is right on the nose. Is right on the nose, correct? Yeah. So you, I would think that it would be nine sixty four to nine sixty to nine sixty. I don't see. I, I don't think. I, I want to argue. You want to argue? Okay. I don't well, think let me just finish this. Is uh, nine hundred and sixty seven point one centimeters and to uh, nine hundred and sixty one point three two centimeters. By the way, keep in mind that right on is in between there. But what the, the big difference is, is look you at this. You see the bottom of the, what you're doing. Oh, there you go. One of the worst cases is going to be when you're starting here and you see white, and then you go around and you, you make your... Uh, um, you but you don't travel any extra distance on that one. That's yeah, you, you, you travel is this extra distance like here without recording a, a, a tick. As opposed to here, where you travel hardly anything and you've got a tick. But if you, if you travel 20 pulses, you have to have 964 centimeters. You can't have less, can you? Maybe Say that wrong. again if you... If you've got 20 pulses, you have to go at least 964.47 if you assume no slippage. If you have 20 pulses? Oh, whatever you had. What 307. Was, 307 pulses. You have to have. It depends on where you start and end. End. Yeah, because that's that's what we're saying. Related like, to this pulse. If you have, if you have. You would be more. If you have 307 pulses, pulses, that means with no slippage, you have to at least travel the 307 pulses worth of what did you tell me? distance. All right, so I, I, I see your question. If you were to start right here, and your position actually ended, you know, anything about that. You know, not right here, but in the same position in relation to where the sensor should be. At least you yeah, will travel exactly this distance. So what I'm saying is that extra distance you travel is either this right here. He said, "No, we're good with plus. Okay, it's the minus. Yeah, if you get 307 pulses, you can't have less than 960 without slipping. It's like there is no. Well, it is. It is if." Well, it's in 307 times 15.35. Because even if you start right after a pulse, your next pulse is still, you're still going to be traveling that extra distance. Well, the distance you travel will be, as I mentioned here, not like pretend, pretend you start, okay, you see where the, the red is written? Make sure you copy the right one. All right, let's, let's go ahead and uh, that's it for the lecture. We're going to discuss the, the details later. Thank you.